Hi, and welcome to this workshop video about my mother station, particularly my mother stop. My name is Dennis, and I am from Hooked on Wood. And over the last years, I tried to improve my mother saw and create an ultimate mother saw station. And so far, I have made a zero clearance insert in the fence. But the exciting thing about this fence is that you can easily change the middle piece if you want to cut another angle with a zero clearance insert. I also created an insert at the bottom, and technically this is not a zero clearance insert because the saw blade moves in an upwards direction, so if there would be splinters, they would exist at the top. And that is why it's good to first make a minor groove on the surface to prevent this from happening. Anyway, the insert is still beneficial because it creates much more stability than perfectly aligned with the platform. And this makes it safer to make uh, cuts in smaller work pieces and nothing will fall in the groove because of the tight cap. I also placed two self-adjusting clamps at the back of the miter saw, making it easy to clamp all different material sizes. And in this video I will show you my new digital miter stop, which I love very much because it works out perfectly and is better than expected. And the last thing I have to do is make something to improve dust extraction. And I have some great ideas on improving dust extraction significantly for a miter saw. And I hope to start with this soon because they keep me awake at night from excitement. But this will be something for a future video. And if you do not want to miss that, subscribe and hit the notification bell. Okay, back to the miter stop. There was a small wish list. I wanted the possibility to use a workbench miter saw station also for other work. So I did not want a fence that was on the surface or in the way. And in my former workshop, I made a fence that I could easily remove and add, which was one of the way to go for in my new workshop and on my miter station. But then I got this miter stop from Banggood. And I have had it for about eight months now, and I'm really enthusiastic about it. And one way or the other, I still did not do a review about it. But this works perfectly and made me realize what a blessing it is when your miter stop goes all the way to your saw blade. And for anyone searching for a convenient miter stop that goes all the way to your saw blade, I highly recommend this one. And I definitely will give it five stars when I would review it. So this was a good angle to look further for an ultimate miter stop. So I basically used this design and improved it on every point until it became my ultimate miter stop. And I wanted the digital readout meter because they are easy to read. I like the accuracy of these devices and the ease of making repeatable cuts. And of course I wanted it all the way to my miter stop. So I could make minor cuts with my digital readout meter as well. And that's why I call it a 0.0 miter stop. What I particularly like about this design is that although I tighten it only at one point, I managed to make it very sturdy and stable. And next I wanted the minor track sunken in my workbench so I could use it as a standard workbench without a fence in my way. And at last I increased the capacity to almost 3 meters. So it pretty much covered all the things I looked for. The only thing I missed is that it would be nice if it had a flip stop. But it is also not that difficult to work around that point and the benefits of making minor cuts with the digital readout meter outweighs the flip stop. I tested its accuracy with different setup block combinations and it passed all these tests very well. So I'm delighted with the result and I also love the looks of it. Although it's not tiny, I did not find it too bulky either, which was my goal. This digital readout meter costs around $70 with a magnetic strip of one meter. But I also got uh, another one, but it arrived just today, which is a bit more affordable. And I planned this one for my miter station because I like the color better. But this comes uh, also with a shorter cable, which I think is more convenient when you cannot shorten it yourself. The white version comes with a very long line. So I think this one is a better choice. And I have links in the description of the video for every part I use in this project. To get a better understanding of how I made it, I tear it apart. And now you can see that it is not such a complex design. The most crucial part is that you make the holes and grooves at the right spot. And if you want it to be stable, there is not that much room for error. But I do not consider it too challenging to build with some essential tools and a router table. I 
I glued two pieces of black MDF together and cut them into the correct dimensions. I made it at this point a bit bigger because I did not know at this moment how far the T-track and the place of the magnet strip would be apart from each other. So I needed the space to cut it later on the exact dimensions. And I wanted the long miter stop connected to the platform with a small T-track. And I did this because I wanted to create a zero point of the platform against the side of the fence. This way I could quickly go to zero, but I could slide the T-track into the base to adjust the miter stop. To make this adjustable, I used a miter track sliding bar. And with two screws, I can tighten the sliding bar. So after measuring the crack spot, I started to drill the holes for these screws. After this, I made a groove. And I do have an Inca router fence. And I have to admit that this makes walking with a router a lot easier. I set up the fence 10 mm from the edge and made the first groove for the T-Track. And I did not want to cut it through, so I installed a stop lock, but this is just a design tip. I made some minor adjustments to the fence until it fitted the way I wanted, which was wide enough uh, that the T-Track could slide inside. I wanted the groove the miter stop very tight, so I made the second cut in a way I had to adjust the fence a few times till I liked it. And this is the benefit of the Inca fence. You can easily change it with one tenth of a millimeter, so when things go wrong it's mostly just a lack of patience. And the same can be said about the groove I had to make to place my miter track into the workbench top. Making that groove is not that hard, but the preparations and measurements are what it is all about. So I carefully measured where I would place the groove, and I took my time because I did not want to screw up my workbench top. Here I made a center line so I could align my router with it. And I did not want to make more than two passes, so I used my biggest spiral bit. And I also said in my former video about my drill press station that a spiral bit is so much more convenient to work with. And this big one cost around $60. And although that is a lot of money, they are worth every penny. I used my setup blocks for the depth settings, because I like the groove a bit deeper than the minor track. But it is also much more convenient and secure to do it this way. One last check and we are good to go. Unfortunately, I did not know that my camera was running at this moment. So instead of turning it on, I turned it off. My reel was not long enough, so I had to slide it further for the last part. And luckily this was less complicated than I expected. I measured the proper distance from the edge for the second groove and made it slightly smaller with a micro adjuster, just to be sure. I made a small test cut and tried if the minor track fitted. And it turned out my measurements were correct the first time, so and I enlarged it again. And then made another check, and when that was perfect I rechecked the rail and finally I was good to go. So the most challenging part is to keep focus and check and recheck and another recheck, etc. But the result was perfect and exactly as I wanted. I had the opportunity to test the smallest vessel router and I decided to use this for the second groove. I needed a second groove for a magnet strip that the digital readout meter needs. And to protect it, I placed it in the LED strip. Luckily I had a router bit, the same size as the LED strip, so this groove was very straightforward. 
When the miter track and LED strips were in place, I could drill the hole to connect my miter stop platform to the miter track. To make the miter stop stable, I made a bar that slides inside the miter track. To attach it to the miter stop base, I first glued it with two drops to make aligning easier. And I use a square to align it perfectly with the miter track. After this, I screw it in place. I did not glue it because I wanted to replace it when needed. To make it stable, this is an essential part because there must be almost zero play at the bar. And with my setup blocks, this is very easy to do. And you can see throughout my video that these setup blocks are very versatile tools. When I found the right size, it was straightforward to set up the miter saw. And it was good to see that my digital readout meter also measured the exact distance. But this way, the result is very accurate. After this I could uh, assemble the miter stop and we only have to install the readout meter. The most straightforward way of attaching the sensor would be at the back. And for that I had to measure where I had to cut the base so the sensor would slide above the magnetic strip. After marking the right spot I could attach the center. And I place two pieces of tape at the underside of the sensor so that when it's removed, the sensor will slightly move above the magnetic strip. And the final step was to secure the digital readout meter to the base. And I like the result so much that it motivates me even more to make something extraordinary for the dust extraction. And like I said in the beginning, I have some great ideas that I hope will work. There are some important things though, if you want to build this digital miter stop yourself. You'll see a nice short cable uh, from the display to the sensor. And I had to shorten this because it will come with a longer lock. But like I said in the beginning, this device comes with a significant shorter cable. And the strange thing is that you cannot turn off these devices. The on uh, off button is there for a backlight, but you cannot turn it off. And I contacted the vendor for this and he confirmed this. However, he told me that the batteries would last a year. And I have had it for over one month now and the battery indicated substantiated this. I placed the display in a nice holder, but it was not that nice when it arrived. And I had to repaint it myself for a better look. Not that much of a deal, but just uh, so you know it. Well, that was the end of this video. I hope you liked it. Let me know in the comments because I am very excited about it. Do not forget to subscribe if you did not do this already. Have a nice day, stay safe, and we will see each other next time.